Ladies and gentlemen, let's begin to the come video. We're going to be talking yet again about the Polaris. As you're probably aware, if you looked at your calendar, it's not too long before the cards are available at your local retailer or your e-tailer, if you prefer. So, as you can imagine, there's a whole bunch of information that's popping up. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the games, uh, some benchmarks. We're going to talk about some more overclocking information and some other stuff as well, including virtual reality performance. Uh, we will be doing a full review here at Red Gaming Tech. It's probably going to be a couple of days after launch. Um, so if you want my opinion, you can definitely stick around. You're going to get that. I also apologize for a bit of extra background noise. At the moment, I'm installing some games in a benchmarking rig because we're testing uh, some CPU, some uh, low-power CPUs. So it's a little noisier than normal, but hopefully we can, uh, we can persevere. With all of that said, let's start. So, first of all, XFX. Now, they are one of the bigger partners when it comes to AMD, and they are preparing at least two, potentially three, RX 480s for launch. Now, these are all going to be equipped with the reference cooler. As a quick aside, you might recall from a couple of days ago, reference coolers are going to start trickling in late next month, mid to late next month, for the 480s, and then it's going to be one month, maybe a little bit more, for the 4.6s and the 4.70 uh, custom coolers to also start to appear on store shelves as well. Anyway, uh, XFX are going to be producing these cards, and one is going to be called the Black Edition OC. Now, this will feature a backplate and will be pre-overclocked to 1328 MHz. There's also going to be a secondary black edition, and that's going to be just a slightly lower clock speed at 1288. It's still slightly above the recommended uh, clock speeds of the card. Now, the inclusion of the back plate, for those of you who are not too sure how that works or why they've done that, is just to basically get more heat away from the card. Theoretically speaking, it should lead to cooler temperatures. What it actually does in a real scenario because obviously we're not testing the card it's too difficult to know um, but still now what about virtual reality one of the selling points of these cards the four eighties is that they're going to be capable of virtual reality performance now I still am a bit dubious on how many folks are going to buy a single RX 480 if they're tight on cash to be able to, p to power a several hundred dollars worth of headset display but still it's nice that you can theoretically do that and I imagine it's going to be pretty popular for Crossfire but anyway um, you may recall a while back the RX 480 using Steam's VR benchmark scores about 6.3 now, it's really interesting because users have now started to test the card, and one individual by the name of Gasolina managed to achieve 6.8 at stock, while with just some fairly meagre overclocking, just 1315 megahertz, which, by the way, is actually lower than the clock speed of the XFX, which is 1328, if you recall, they were able to achieve a score of 6.8 and 7, respectively. So that means that this card is going to easily be able to run a headset display without too much difficulty whatsoever. Now that is on a fairly beefy CPU, it's an i7-5820, but obviously in this instance, primarily the GPU is the thing that's doing most of the work, and, well, your mileage can vary. One of the more interesting uh, rumours or slash reports is Batman. So Batman Arkham Knight on the PC is pretty darn intensive and unfortunately, at least as far as I'm aware, not too many settings were revealed for benchmarking, but we see the built-in benchmark of Batman achieving 110 frames per second on average at 1080p. Now, 1440p is obviously slightly more taxing to say the least, but it still manages to achieve 72 frames per second, which I'm sure you'll agree is not just playable, that is pretty darn amazing. Now, I did do a test with my own rig, um, and this is a very quick test. This was actually running a few background tasks, 
um, and with default clock speeds and an R9 390 and I achieved around 90 frames per second average. Unfortunately I'm basing this on very little information because I don't know what settings the individual was using exactly for Batman um, and obviously less information regarding driver revisions and whether they were overclocking and a whole bunch of other stuff but even so, it shows that at the very least, this card is probably going to be slightly faster than an R9 390, which we kind of knew anyway, to be honest. That's not really surprising. Um, one final thing is regarding overclocking. So, what's quite weird about the overclocking is some folks are saying that the reference cooler is perfect, other folks are saying it's great as long as you're sticking to reference voltages or reference clocks. So what basically starts happening is you start running into a thermal limit. I am not going to comment whether that's the case because unfortunately we don't have a large enough sample size. We don't know, for example, all of the conditions and criteria that those individuals were running in with their work environments. For example, if they're in a fairly stuffy office in the middle of, let's say, Nevada, then they're going to have very different conditions than, let's say, someone who is in the middle of Antarctica. Okay, I might be slightly exaggerating, but you get what I mean here. My personal opinion is one that I'm going to echo once again. If overclocking is your gig, if overclocking is the thing that you're interested in, wait for a couple of weeks for the reference coolers to start trickling into the headlines and then make your decision whether you're an adventurous individual who don't give a flying fuck whether that you know sapphire or xfx or whatever decide to strap a nitrogen tank to their retail cards and you're happy to maybe put the things under water and maybe buy a specific block for that then hey, that's all down to you and whether you're comfortable removing the cooler. Now, personally, I don't do that with my graphics cards, just simply because I overclock, but I'm not interested that much into getting the maximum performance out of it. I used to be much more into overclocking when I was younger, when I had more time, but now I tend to not really focus on it so much. I typically st uh, stay with reference-ish clocks for the most part. Now, I'm not criticizing those individuals who really like to push the envelope. I think it's really cool, but I typically don't rip open my, you know, graphics cards to change the cooler and all of that stuff. I have done it in the past. I just don't really do voltage mods and stuff anymore. That's just me personally. But hey, it's going to be interesting how they all respond. Finally, more 3D Mark results are popping up um, and they are still within the ballparks that we'd expected around 12,000 to 13,000 in graphics score and also this of course depends largely on what the user is doing regarding overclocking. Once again just to reiterate 1266 megahertz is the stock clocks of the card. My only real worry with these cards isn't necessarily what they really put out. It's what people's expectations are um, of the GPUs and I think some individuals believe that they're going to run games at 4K whereas others I think realize that they're going to be for pretty good 1440p gaming um, and obviously being able to max out 1080p. So I personally believe these cards are going to be pretty damn, damn exciting. I don't think they're going to necessarily be an upgrade if you've got something along the lines of a GTX 970, an R9 390, something like that. But if you are the owner of an older card, let's say for the sake of argument a GTX 760, uh, maybe an R9 280 or something along those lines, or maybe you've got an older PC and you're looking to perhaps make the jump to a PC gaming, maybe you're a PS4 owner at the moment and you're thinking, hey, you know what, I want to kind of get into PC gaming, um, maybe you want to buy a cheap 
2500k or something like that from eBay and then you want to pair it with an R9 um, 480 I think that's a really good bargain so I think that these cards are going to have a really good market share I think that unless we've been lied to a awful lot regarding the performance it's looking at least in my estimation judging from the scores and ultimately we can only judge based upon the information that we've been given but from what I'm reading and from what I'm seeing it looks like the cards are going to be slightly more than the R9 390 maybe more slightly more like the R9 390X but cheaper and run cooler questions remain like how well does it overclock especially with third party uh, solutions is voltage mod voltage modding excuse me going to be a thing for example, let's say if you're putting the thing under water and you're going to be able to really maybe crank those clock speeds up. I imagine some people could do that. They maybe want to try and see if they can get them to like 15, 1600 megahertz. And I'm not saying that that's realistic for all cards. I'm just saying that I imagine some individuals are going to want to do that. So they could be a modder's dream or they could simply end up to be a really good GPU for uh, the mainstream sector. One thing's for certain, I think AMD have done themselves an awful, awful, uh, an awful lot of uh, credit because I think that the cards will sell really well. I think for the price point that they're pretty fa fantastic value if they end up performing once again as advertised. With all of that said, I think that's about it for this particular video. Um, I'm going to be a bit quiet over the next couple of days because we've got an awful lot to do. I'm still working on the CPU review. Hopefully I'll finish the main stuff on that tomorrow. I've got the basic benchmarks done, so I need to, need to do the photography of the motherboard and the platform. And then edit it and put it all together. Then I'm going to start work on potentially another review. I'm negotiating a couple of pieces of hardware at the moment, some SSDs and other bits. And I'm also working on some technical analysis on something else. I'm thinking Vulcan, and I'm still trying to get that resolved as well with the interview because individuals have gone on holiday, so it's making it a little bit difficult. But um, hopefully that will come pretty soon as well. Uh, but anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Um, normal stuff, if you've liked the video and it's your first time here, definitely subscribe and we'll keep putting them out. Um, and share it with your friends, your buddies, your co-workers, your family, your, well, anyone basically, even, even your enemies. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video though. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.